In this video, we are going to see what happens if you have a list of tasks that are running simultaneously and one of them throws an error. And also we are going to learn how to identify which one threw the error. So what I'm going to do is that first I will paste these three methods that simulate a task that takes one second. Then I will come here and write begin and also end and in the middle I will create a list of tasks. As you can see, we have new list task, job one, job two, and job three. And then in order to execute them simultaneously, we can say await task when all, and then tasks. Of course, this will simply work because we're still not throwing any exceptions. As you can see here, there was no errors. Now, if I come here, for example, to job three, and I say throw new, exception then if we press ctrl f5 we're going to see that we have the exception here on the console and our application was abruptly stopped and as you can see we have that the error was thrown in line 6 which is the line of the task went all so we know that what we can do in order to catch an exception is to use a try catch so if we do a try catch here like this, then we can get the tasks that threw the error by using is faulted. Let's say bar tasks that failed, I'll use link Q, tasks where is faulted dot to list. When a task is faulted, it means that there was an error in that task. Now with this, I can do a for each task in tasks that failed. And here I will write console right line task Control f5 and we're going to see that here on the console you can see that our application didn't abruptly stop and here we can see that to a string representation of the task and here we have job3 which is the method which through the exception now this is really hard to read so what we're going to do is that we're going to use the data property of exception in order to pass information from our jobs into this catch that we have here so let's come here and let's say try and let me put this code in the try block catch exception x and then we can use x data data is a dictionary that will allow me to pass data through this exception so let me say method name equal to name of job three semicolon and then I can rethrow the exception. So throw, and notice that I just said throw and not throw X because if you do throw X, then you lose exact trace information. Therefore, in order to rethrow the exception, we must use just throw. Now let's come here. Let me copy this and let's come here. And let me say this bar exception, task exception, inner exception, in order to get access to the exception that was thrown from here this one so after that i can get the method name method name equal to exception data and then we copy this data method name semicolon and here i can write something like the method method name failed now if i press ctrl f5 to run our application we're going to see that now we have job three so as you can see it is really easy for me now to know which method failed now i can Copy this and paste that here and also here. And let me change this to job one and job two. And let me comment this out here in job one so that we only throw an exception in job two and job three. And you will see that control F5. And we have that job two fail and job three fail. So as you can see, it is really easy for us to use is faulted and also the data property of exception to identify which of the tasks that were running simultaneously through an error. If you want to learn more about C Sharp, buy my Udemy course today. I also have courses on asynchronous programming and parallelism in C Sharp, Entity Framework Core, among others. Link with a discount to all of my courses in the description of this video. Thank you.